Howdy, it's Tubal Cain again, and this time with Shop Tips number 237, and I'm continuing with the Atlas series, and this one is entitled, Threading on the Atlas Lathe Without a Threading Dial. This is an Atlas Craftsman 12-inch lathe, and you've seen me watching it here in uh, many of these videos in this series, but... There are some of you out there that do not have a threading dial like this that normally goes in this position on your Atlas lathe or any other lathe for that matter. And uh, what I'm going to show you here really is not exclusive to Atlas lathes, but it would apply to, to uh, really any lathe where you're doing uh, threading. Now as I do this uh, video, I'm not going to uh, show you all the steps in threading because that's been covered in many of my other videos and most recently in uh, shop tips number 223 which is called cutting a thread on the atlas lathe. So I'm not going to talk too much about the setup but simply show you how to uh, keep your, your tool in alignment, synchronized uh, without using a dial because either you don't have one of these, you lost it, and some older lathes are not equipped with it. I know that some of the small Atlas lathes, the six inchers, I believe, do not have this. And uh, you can buy these over eBay if you do not have one. And uh, this little gear, of course, uh, rides in the lead screw and that helps you synchronize the uh, thread uh, as you repeat uh, your cuts. Several things before we start. Now in order to thread without a dial, you're going to have to engage the half knot lever like that and it will remain engaged throughout the entire threading operation. So we're not going to turn that on and off. The half knot, the split knot is now engaged onto the lead screw and will remain that way. I need to emphasize that. You will lose your place if you uh, uh, release that. So down it goes and stays during this operation. In order to thread without a dial you need to have a reversing switch on your lathe. Now some lathes do not have that. You just can only run the machine in forward but originally and I think you were confused by some of the other videos there was an on and off switch here which I have removed because that was disabled years ago but I just took it out of there and, and put a delete plate on there. But uh, this machine has a reversing switch on it forward and reverse. So you must be able to your lathe in order to uh, use this method. There are some dangers in reversing a lathe, uh, especially on larger lathes. If you're running it at high speed, you can spin the chuck off. So take care that that can't happen. That's just a warning. Also make sure you're wearing your safety glasses and observing all safety procedures when operating a lathe. But let me tell you something about single phase motors. If you do not understand this, they have a centrifugal switch in them that is the starting switch. And if the motor is not slowed down sufficiently when you reverse it, it will not, in fact, reverse. It'll continue to go in the direction that it was traveling, uh, such as this. We're moving forward. You can see the hand wheel moving. And if I instantly move it to reverse, notice that it continues to go in the same direction. Same way there. So if you, in order to reverse the travel, let it stop or come close to being stopped and then it will reverse. That is the nature of single phase motors with uh, centrifugal uh, switches. Today I'm going to make a simple thread here up to the undercut and you do need uh, an undercut or some way to terminate your thread. So this is just half inch aluminum and I'm going to cut a one half inch 13 thread. And I'm going to use uh, this type of uh, Armstrong uh, threading uh, form threading tool. And the quick change gearbox is set for 13. The feed reverse lever is uh, set in the top position here. I'm in back gears and I'm running at 70 RPM. Over here the compound is set at 29 degrees. The threading uh, tool holder here is already set on center as far as the elevation is concerned. 
and it's squared up with the uh, the work using my uh, center gauge, my little uh, fish tail. So that's all been done ahead of time, uh, and I'm not going to bore you with that setup. Now I'm turning between centers, and I'm uh, using a dog in the dog plate, so I've taken the chuck off. The work is now between the centers. I've tightened the dog, and note that this is what we call a safety dog as opposed to a standard dog. And I don't know, this doesn't seem all safe to me anyway, but uh, I guess it's safer than having this big uh, set screw sticking out. So I'm using a safety dog just arbitrarily because that, I had that handy. Now make sure the tail of the dog is in the, the open slot here, or mark the slot that you're, you are using so that you always return the work should you take it out into the same slot or you will throw your timing off and ruin your thread because later on as you uh, approach the final size you might be taking the work out to measure it or check it with a nut and I'm simply going to use a half 13 nut to check the final size because uh, I'm not too worried about getting uh, the size real accurate for the purposes of this demonstration. I'm all ready to thread so I'm bringing the cross feed up until I get the zero and I even put a white line on the collar here so it's easy for me to see and it'll expedite things as I thread but that's optional also and I'm very close to the work with the tool. So now I'm going to uh, advance the compound in until I just scratch the work. Just leave a mark on it. And that may not show up in the video but I just took a a little bit of a shaving off. So I'm up to the work. As I'm making the setup here, I found that there's an interference here between the tool and uh, the live center. So I have to make an adjustment here and I'm going to switch and put the uh, concentric spring-loaded uh, live center in there. I now have the clearance that I need in here and you can see that the tool is up to the work. I really need to mount this lathe to the floor. I've got a, I got a vibration. You can see the whole lathe moves even though I have it shimmed. But anyway, and this lathe is as loud as a combine I've said before so I can hope, I hope you can hear my voice over the roar of the machine itself. And here we go. The uh, half nut is engaged permanently. And again, the cross feeds at zero. The compound uh, has been fed in, oh, perhaps ten thousandths or more, but it's going in at an angle, so it isn't truly ten thousandths. I'm going to turn uh, the machine on in forward, and when I get to the undercut, I'll let it uh, slow down and go into reverse. But I will need to back the, co the uh, cross feed out at that time or it will uh, drag and because of lost motion and uh, backlash it's going to drag in a slightly different position than the thread cut so you must back the cross feed out a little bit and then always return it to zero in the home position and this is the home position here we go Stop the machine, back out with the cross feed, and reverse. Back into zero, feed the uh, compound just a little bit.
mature yourself or faster if you're confident. But probably always in back gears. And as you get near the end, take a couple passes without increasing the compound feed. For instance, this pass here, and you, you can see that uh, there's a certain amount of spring back in the tool and the work. And that's what I'm taking up right now. And the thread is starting to come to a V. In another pass or two, I'll take it out and check it with a nut. Now I think I'll stop and uh, check it with a nut. So it looks like it's getting close. And it is. So that thread is done. Now if you need to put it back in and take another cut, make sure the tail of the dog goes back into the same slot of the uh, drive plate. Even though the thread is completed, I'm going to show uh, what my hands are doing from this view. And uh, again, the uh, half nut lever is down and we're not using a dial and I guess I could throw that away. Cross feed is in zero. Turn the motor on forward. When I come into the end of the cut, Turn the motor off, back out the cross speed, and put it in reverse. When I get to the end there, stop the motor, feed in the uh, cross feed, and I would take a slight cut with the compound. I'm not going to do that now because I'm down to depth. Forward. Keep your hand on the switch. Stop, back out, reverse, and stop. Now if you've never done this before, turn the radio off, turn your phone off, and uh, give instructions to your family not to bother you. You need to concentrate or you can spoil the thread. Well that completes this video. There's my thread. Nut fits just fine and all done without the use of a threading dial.
I hope you found this useful, those of you that do not have one of these, and, and uh, understand uh, all the steps that I have gone through here. And if you don't, go back and watch this video again. And be sure and watch my 500 other videos, including the uh, approximately 20 that are in the series of this Atlas lathe. And this is Tubal Cain saying so long for now, and I'll see you in my next video.